Hey guys, um, today I want to uh, do some more autofocus tests on the Fuji X-H2S. I uh, had it out this morning at my local marsh doing some uh, some shooting. I was hoping to get more birds in flight, but they just weren't really out. I had a couple of um, couple of opportunities though, and some more eye focus tests. Um, I have to say right off the bat, this camera is really good. Um, clickbait title, you know, the truth about the Fuji autofocus system is it's just really good. And I'm not a shill. I'm a guy who originally left Fuji because um, the autofocus was not good on the X-T3 um, for wildlife. And, and certainly as uh, accomplished shooters will show, um, you could get by without eye tracking and, and certainly get amazing results. Um, but I really like eye tracking. It, it's I like to to let the camera do that for me, and and I tried four or five different systems after Fuji, including the Canon R5, which changed how I shot because of the the autofocus, and I really wanted it back. I think every system I tried after Canon that didn't have auto eye focus, I really wanted. And uh, just a preface: I'm not a wealthy person. I'm not out here buying a hundred cameras. I bought things and sold things and. Every time I decided I didn't like something, I sold it. And ultimately, why did I leave Canon? Um, I thought it was too expensive. I, I looked at how much money I had invested in Canon lenses and the body, and and I just thought it was way too much money for for what it was, and that I should be able to get those results um, with other options. And and ultimately, I got a lot of really good shots on bodies that didn't have that eye focus, but I wanted it back. So. Um, I've got I've found a few few weaknesses where the Fuji is is missing. Um, I would say again, angry comment section. People are freaking out about things. No camera is perfect. A Sony A1 is not perfect. A Canon R3 is not perfect. Um, at the the end of the day, how do I evaluate an autofocus system? Do I trust it? Um, yes or no? Do I trust it enough to use it to get me shots? Yes or no? Um, I was using the Olympus EM1X before I I came to Fuji, and it has a bird tracking. Uh, mode that I used and sometimes it worked. Do I trust it? No. I was out shooting loons one morning in the kayak two months ago and um, missed a bunch of shots and the camera was showing me that it was focusing but they just were not in focus. They were objectively very soft images. Um, sometimes it worked. I did get some sharp photos using that but I missed a lot. So um, yeah, the Fuji system really works. I was having a conversation with a friend this morning and I was talking about things and I would say one issue that I've seen right away is uh, big herons and egrets and cranes. Um, I, uh, twice now I've encountered uh, a great blue heron and then uh, an egret this morning. And both times it was a little iffy. I mean, it worked. I shot on eye focus the whole time. So any sharp photos you see are with eye focus. It's not that it couldn't get it, but I found it jumped a lot more than I expected. Like when I'm at my pond shooting songbirds, I mean, it, I, I have complete, complete trust. When it's warbler migration season next time, um, I mean, having shot warblers this past spring with no eye focus, uh, I can't wait to go back to having eye focus because it's just so easy when you just point at the bird and just locks right on. So, I mean, it works for the egrets and the herons, but if I was shooting specifically, if, if I was out to the river to try to catch my local green hair, green, a uh, great blue heron, um, getting an action shot of a fish, I might use a traditional zone instead of the eye focus um, if I feel like it might might let me down in that immediate moment. If I'm out kayaking and I see a heron and I'm just looking for a nice shot and it's not something particular, uh, am I going to feel the need to turn off the eye focus? No. Um, so let's jump into things. Let's let's show you uh, what we got here. Um, Sorry. Okay, we're going to record our screen. There we go. Okay. So first, we're going to do some video tests. I keep hearing how the Fuji video autofocus is no good. Um, and we'll see if this works for the video. I'm just opening the file in on one and then playing it in quick time doing a screen recording. Now, I apologize in advance for the shakiness. Uh, I am a big believer that um, you should be using a tripod for a video with a telephoto. Uh, I was not, I wasn't even braced. I was standing up shooting at, at almost 900 millimeter equivalent for a lot of this. I think I zoomed out at one point, but it's pretty wobbly. I mean, the camera and the lens do a good job for stability, but, but it wobbles. So in the future, we're going to get more of this with, um, uh, with a tripod, but, but here we go. So, I mean, look at that. That's nothing. And if you see, see the wave, so it flicked for a second there. 
But if, if you see those black shadows, that's, uh, I was shooting through grass. So like there were things blowing in front of the lens directly. Um, and that was really challenging, but like the birds moving, you can see, see the leaves in the corners. You can see all, all those dark shades. Bam. Can't tell if he got it. He's so quick. But look how sharp that is. I mean, and another thing that I've, I've mentioned that uh, this is an off note, but one thing I really like on what this camera does, is when you hit record, um, it starts recording video in whatever exposure you're already in. My R5 didn't do that. My R5, I, it, it, when I hit the record button, like the little red button on the camera, it started recording in whatever preset exposure I had, which is great, but I mean, I had to try to set a general exposure that would work in most cases. And typically, once I started recording, it was uh, gone. Um, and I'd have to change. So like every video, I'd have to go in and cut the first bit. I couldn't just use video right away because I'd have to change the exposure. So I like how the Fuji's doing it. Maybe you could fix the R5 and not do it that way. But the Fuji just does that natively. Um, and a weird thing, I can't seem to change shutter speed on the Fuji when I'm filming. I'm sure there's a way, but it seems to also default to the right shutter speed, uh, you know, double your frame rate for nice smooth video. Um, it seems to do that right away, which is cool. So now this is a weird one. I think uh, we're kind of going through these together. So here's the egret. I thought this was kind of funny. Uh, there's a great blue heron here in the background. Um, and I think this one focuses a little bit weird. Um, I think it got confused over who I wanted to focus. He's a tricky bird to see. I mean, he looks like a, a bush basically hidden in the leaves. Um, and it's a little slow to move to him, but I should preface, I haven't changed any of the video settings and it's set up right now to film pretty cinematically. So it's not, I don't have it like snappy, snappy on the video autofocus. Um, and again, you see that leaf, like we're struggling. So I think it kind of lost him for a second there, but then I start pointing at the, the heron. And again, like I'm zooming too while it's doing that. So once I'm on him and it finds him, that's no problem. He's scraggly looking too. Yeah, he's kind of a funny bird. Um, so he flew right after that and I did a flight test. I'll show you that in a second, but let's look at one more video test. This one, I'm a little more zoomed in. Let's see if I stop bobbling. Oh, I'm so sorry, it's so shaky. Yeah, I was trying to zoom out to get a little bit more better coverage. I think you can get away with handheld maybe if you're shooting like 120 frames per second to slow it down. I mean, that's not bad there. Once I stabilized myself, we did okay. Oh, he's got, got something. Look at that. I mean, come on. You're complaining about this autofocus. You got to learn your gear. <laughs> I mean, this is like, I've had the camera two days. This is right out of the box. So um, what are we at? We're at eight minutes. I'm going to try to keep this video to 20. We're going to go through these quick um I am really bad with my shorebird names, but I'm not used to seeing these little uh, these little waders around. Um, so let's look at some image quality, and we're just going to go through these and like reject and cull them together um, quick. So you can see a ton of heat haze. Uh, I will say this bird, it was having a struggle to get on to this guy. Um, I mean, it got him. I did flick over to single point at some point, but he was pretty far, um, pretty far away, and he's small, and he's like. I mean, look, he's like perfectly blended into his environment. So um, backlit on the egret. I mean, the autofocus is fine. There's no contrast in the details because of the way the lighting's going, but that's fine. Now you will see a lot of my misses are, are going to be um, with these herons. So like this one's kind of annoying. Like it missed, uh, he's got a fish. So it got there, but I don't know why it missed those other two. So, uh, and I should say I'm shooting at the 15 FPS. Um, I've heard some people, I guess I was going back and forth between these birds. I've heard some people talk and say that the autofocus is less uh, reliable at 40 FPS. I haven't shot 40 yet. I mean, I'm having really good luck at 15. It seems fast enough. I, I don't want to destroy my cards and come home with 10,000 pictures for no reason. But, but again, I think the thing to remember <clears throat> even if it's a little less accurate at 40 FPS, I mean, if you're getting uh, 60, 70 percent hit rate at 40 FPS or 60, 70 percent hit rate at 15 FPS, 
you're still gonna end up with a lot more sharp photos, um, even if you're missing more, even if your hit rate's lower at a higher frames per second, you'll probably still have more sharp photos because you took more photos in their sample size. So um, these are just some goofy photos of some ducks, they're fine. Um, our egret, again, I mean, focus is fine. Image quality is not good. Uh, heat haze is rough to shoot with. So I'm shooting like a backlit bird across the water. Um, at what are these? Some of these I'd stop down to f11. Let's see here. I mean, I don't have any problem with the sharpness on most of them, but the image quality is rough. This this kingfisher, I'll show you here. I always take bad pictures of kingfishers just because I like them. But this is how far away the kingfisher was. So this is zoomed out. This was my egret, uh, and this is the kingfisher. So this is at 150 mil. So full frame equivalent, what, 225? So that's zoomed in to 900. That's at F8. It seemed to deal better with the heat haze I saw earlier at F11. Uh-oh. There we go. We froze for a second. Um, okay. Yeah, it seemed maybe a little sharper at F11. But again, I mean, this is a tricky one. I would say autofocus here. I had a note. Um, it did okay. It's a tough, tough one again. I mean, small bird, very far and hidden among the leaves. I mean, this is... The, the, the thing you have to understand is like, this is, there's no gear in the world gets you a good picture here, right? You can't be that far away from a bird and get a good picture. So, I mean, you know, that's not good. It's nice to identify it's a kingfisher, but like, that's not going to be good ever. So when I'm evaluating, like, I'm not looking, like you can see, like sometimes here, like it completely blew focus there, blew it a little there, got it on some, <coughs> So a little under the weather. Tested negative twice for COVID here, but feel pretty crappy. So I don't know what it is. He was chirping. There were two kingfishers at the pond this morning. I wish they weren't so grumpy because I would love to get good pictures of them, but we'll see. Okay. Um, I've got more tests, more of the egret, but let's get into some flight stuff. So these are, uh, there were some, a couple of cormorants. Uh, this is down at Lake Ontario. Um, now I'm shooting, these are completely silhouette black, uh, backlit birds. Again, these are, there's like, there's nothing here to take a picture of detail wise, but the tracking, like no problem. Um, and I do, I know before you complain, well, Mike, there's no background. Anything can track on a blue sky. I get it. Um, but that's not true. Lots of cameras can't track on a blue sky and I'm not just talking about putting it into zone focus and getting sharp flight shots. I'm saying the camera was tracking the bird, even though it couldn't see its eye. And I, and hopefully I'll be able to do some uh, EVF recordings. I'm trying to get that sorted out without buying an expensive recorder. Um, but the camera was tracking the bird, no problem. And if you look at this, I mean, look, those are all for silhouette shots. Those are all like perfectly sharp. Look, it didn't miss one. I haven't done any editing. I haven't deleted any of these. I wasn't rattling this off. I don't keep my finger on the trigger like a, a madman, but I was shooting little bursts, you know, seven, eight shots at a time. That was just me rendering. Look, there's not one missed shot. Now again, okay, zoom in. There's not a lot of detail there. This bird was far, again, bad light, bad haze. Um, so you, again, you're not you're not going to get a good shot on that. But if you're just talking sharp, even even heading into the trees here, you can see like it's sharp, 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 all sharp. Uh, there's the other kingfisher. Again, super far. It's 900 millimeters. Okay, here we are back into the egret. So again, like, I mean, focused on them, fine. This just goes to show you got to watch your your conditions. I didn't get a lot of really nice IQ shots this morning. It's pretty sharp. This one was 
tricky. I'm trying to remember which bird it focused on. I think I was mostly focusing on the mom. Um, but it was getting the babies too. I dropped my shutter to 250. Um, so there's a little bit of motion blur on some of them. Um, that I mean, something like this is where I would maybe use single point if I really cared which bird was in focus. I didn't. I mean, there's a bad angle. I knew these weren't. I was just like focusing to see what it picked up on the bird. I wasn't trying to get anything particularly wonderful. But I mean, it's still sharp. And again, that's like a pretty intense crop to fill. That's kind of nice, actually. Clone stamp the mom out of there, maybe. Hmm. We'll favorite that. We'll come back and see if I can do something. It might be nice if I can get rid of the mom on that. I'm tempted to like do a quick edit on this here now, but but no, I'm gonna stay on tasks. No more uh, rant. This video is not gonna be as short as I wanted, but we're gonna stay on task. We're strictly looking at autofocus. I have not done any culling. What we got there. Still show. I mean, look, that's still. And again, like, look at how tough the light is. So like the contrast is kind of lost, but that's still sharp. This one I did edit actually earlier. It was just a dorky little chickadee. Uh, what do we got here? Grackle. Ooh, 12800. That still looks really good. If you don't crop in on that, look at the image quality. That's 12800. It looks fantastic. And even when you crop in, like, I mean, you can denoise that if you want, easy. This was cool. I've never seen a grackle with a fish. It's kind of neat. Again, these are bad shots. Um, all these ones, like, I was just, like, shooting what I saw. Uh, <clears throat> so, he, I, so here I cranked my exposure compensation down, trying to do something artsy with uh, the egret. I'm going to have to play around with my edits on these, but I think... I think these could be cool. Let's just get off topic for one second. If we like. Something like that. Maybe like kill some of that around. But but here we're starting to get better sharpness because um, the light's better. So again, I was still shooting like through uh, through these leaves. Um, and you can see like things were blowing in front of the camera. Part of it was intentional. Um, I did some shots later, like trying to, uh, get something cool. Well, that's cool. Wish I didn't miss the reflection. But, okay, this is what I want to show you here. So now we start, I mean, this is the same. So you can see all these shots of the egret the whole time have been sharp, but now you can start to see... Like when I drop my exposure compensation, um, now you can start to see contrast in the details. So like, that's nice. Look at the feather. It'd be nice if he was looking at the camera. But now you're starting to get quality and like these would probably clean up pretty nice as well. If you wanted to like throw some sharpening on there. So just for argument's sake, so we're gonna add sharpening, we're gonna mask, and then we're gonna paint it in, just to the face. Uh, let's do a little, little more over here. Okay, and Let's see, maybe a little intense. Uh, let's bring down the detail a little. There we go. I mean, 
mean, yeah, that's pretty pretty good. So there's a lot of there's a lot of detail like in these files as you start getting through them. But again, like I mean, this is it. And when people are saying, hey, like this lens can't focus or this body can't focus, and not just with the Fuji, with any gear. Um, I mean, I hate to burst your bubble, but a lot of it comes down to technique and, and how you shoot. I mean, it's uh, this one, we lost focus a little, but we're back on. I mean, come on, you, that's as sharp as you're gonna ask for. And again, this bird's like 80 feet off. Lost it on that one. Back here, but you can see, and those, so you can see, I mean, I've blown out a little bit of the highlights just by uh, not underexposing. So you gotta watch. Now I wonder, hmm, this just playing. Man, that's pretty blown up, no matter what you do. So, what else we got here? We're almost, what are we at, 21 minutes? I'll wrap this up shortly. But um, <clears throat> I have one more flight test I wanna show you. But yeah, you can see, I mean, there's a lot of sharpness in these photos. This is what I was talking about doing some, and you can see like, so some of these like here it missed, here it missed, there it found it, found it, kind of found it. That's kind of neat. I mean, this is dumb. This is tough to shoot through. <coughs> okay, here we go. This is the flight test I want to show you. So that heron I showed you earlier, it took off. And what did I get? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not nine, eight or nine shots. So it took off. I didn't even have it. I didn't even see it flying. I was at one one thousandth. I barely even had a chance. Again, this is far, like this is at 900 millimeters. Look how far this is against the background. So um, somebody was chirping the other day and saying, hey, you know, you, uh, you if you're not tracking something against the background, then what good is it? But I mean, we got it, no problem. It tracked it. Again, I mean, yeah, there's not a lot of detail in the bird because it's too far, but the camera easily found it. So got it, got it, got it. Still got it, still got it. A little softer there, but still have it, a little softer. Very sharp, very sharp, and that was the end. So, I mean, I'm quite happy with that. You shot that at 40 FPS and had, you know, double or triple as many shots, see how it goes. But again, like I said, this is never gonna be a good photo. This is too far away. Um, herons too, I mean, they're always flying away from you <laughs> because they're so skittish, so. Tough to get like a nice flight shot of a heron, like not looking at the butt. But um, overall, yeah, I mean, can't argue with it. Uh, who's this little guy? We'll do, let's do one more quick edit test. This is uh, this is Chunk. Uh, we had like six or seven groundhogs living on our property last year. Uh, I was barbecuing last night. Uh, what did I shoot this? I shot this at eight o'clock last night, 20 after eight, one two fiftieth. Pretty far, so let's just do a quick example to see. This guy was, how far was he away? Maybe like 70, 80 feet. So this was at 3,200. I don't see a lot of noise. Yeah, you can see like it is getting rid of some. And it's kind of artifacting a little bit there. What are we doing? Okay. So if we pull down enhanced detail, cleans up a little. Yeah, it goes a little nuts. But then if we go there, definitely cleans it up a bit. And I think that's another thing too, is, is when you take a picture, you have to like decide, um, what are you after? What are you after in terms of sharpness, in terms of quality? So, I mean, this, this is a picture that like, I don't think, um, I don't think this picture benefits from like being cropped in very hard. Maybe you crop like compositionally, put him down in the, the stick or something like that, or down in the corner with the, the this branch in front of his, this flower in front of his face. But, um, you know, if, if you're gonna crop a picture that's already in low light and too far and you wanna crop like that, 
I mean, you're going to start losing image quality. Whereas at full, where are we? At full size, I think that's pretty good image quality. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with the picture. I mean, I wouldn't use this. The composition is eh, but... Um, but the image image quality is, is how you use it. So my point is stop overcropping and stop shooting in bad light and stop exposing wrong and stop blaming gear. I mean, some gear is not good, but I mean, I have friends uh, shooting some pretty rough gear, getting some pretty amazing results by using good technique. And I'm not, um, I am, I am one of the worst photographers in my peer group of wildlife shooters. But if there's one thing I learned, it's that good gear makes your life easier and good gear will get you better results. But the the best thing you can do to get good results is have good technique because really good technique on bad gear will get you way better results than bad technique on good gear. Um, now, yes, the new Fuji rig is very good gear and I think it makes it easier. And I think my technique is getting better and, and I look forward to growing with this camera, but... Um, I hope this video showed, you know, the autofocus is great. The image quality is great. Um, if you give this camera good options uh, and you treat it well, it's going to do well for you. So enjoy it.